increase the Senate because I think that's justice. President Trump threatening to shut down the southern U.S. border as a caravan of thousands of Central American migrants heads towards the U.S. I'm willing to send the military to defend our southern border if necessary. President Trump says it looks like a missing Saudi journalist is dead and the consequences for Saudi Arabia could be severe. It certainly looks that way to me. It's very sad. We owe the American people to be there for them, for, the, for their financial security. If there is some um, collateral damage for some others who do not share our view, well, so be it. But this year you wanted to spice things up again, right? I get it. You wanted an Indian woman, but Elizabeth Warren failed her DNA test. <laughs> here in New York. Oh, she's funny. free to say what she wants now. She's leaving, right? You can have fun. Right. She had fun at the expense of Elizabeth Warren and Mayor de Blasio as well. Well, we're going to have fun at your expense all day because I heard it's your birthday. It is so my birthday. So I came birthday. in special. Birthday. Happy birthday. We're so glad you were born. That means it's officially my birthday when Ainsley yes. says it. That you know what it means, too? When you walk into his house, we've, we've <laughs> been on the, on the tour with him, the cookbook tour. When you walk in yep. his house today, Kathy's going to have the pot roast. Is your mama's pot roast? Stress she made it for me made... last night because we're doing the book tour today. Oh, God, we're going down it. to uh, Canton, Ohio, or Canton, uh, Georgia, to be at uh, the River Church, and then tomorrow we're going to be out in Beaver Creek, Ohio, well, at Books and Company. Just in time for your birthday, I saw on Amazon yesterday it was number one in the world, so that's, that's awesome. awesome. Thanks to all of you. Thank all you right. very much. Uh, they're printing them as fast as they. And can. by the way, Angel and I have been trying to bake all morning. We had to do the show. <laughs> we were going to bake with friends and get you a cake. We haven't been able to do it yet. But you know, we'll Brian try. was always talking about his easy bake oven that he had growing up which is just maybe a that's why brian's not here today <laughs> maybe. he's making your birthday cake he bailed on your birthday he'll right. be back monday thank you he all right be. lots to talk about today it is two minutes past the top of the hour so let's get straight to this fox news alert planes filled with police and riot gear landing at the border of mexico and guatemala president trump praising that move as the migrant caravan inches closer to the u.s well, right now, Griff Jenkins is live way down in McAllen, Texas, with the administration's plan to stop those thousands from crossing into Mexico and then crossing into the United States. Hey, Griff. Hey, good morning, guys. I am in ground zero, the heaviest trafficked sector of the entire U.S.-Mexico border, as the president keeps eyes on that caravan hundreds of miles of where I'm standing. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will meet today with Mexican officials to try and implement a plan to stop that caravan along the Mexican border. We saw more than 500 federal officers deployed in that effort. We will see what happens. Last night, the president in a rally in Montana thanking the Mexican government government for their efforts. Listen. I just want to thank the Mexican government because they're stopping it hopefully before it ever gets to Mexico. I'm willing to send the military to defend our southern border if necessary. All caused because of the illegal immigration onslaught brought by the Democrats because they refuse to acknowledge or to change the laws. They like it. But here's the thing, guys, and here's why I'm standing where I am right now, and that is for hundreds of miles before that caravan gets here, the problem on this border is already exploding. A record number of illegal families crossing, more than 16,000 last month. That is an 80% increase since July when the administration reversed their policy on the zero tolerance. And get this number, 107,000, more than 107,000 family members taken into custody in fiscal year 2018. That shatters the record set in 2016, which is just over 78,000. And where I am in the Rio Grande Valley sector, RGV, they are seeing a 300% increase in family units coming since this time last year. More than 5,400 in just this one station in the last two weeks and countless loads of dope. We're about to go on a ride along here shortly as the sun comes up. We'll try and bring it to you live so you can just see the pressure already mounting on this border, and that's why the president is talking about this being a major issue in the midterms less than a month away, guys. Griff, yeah. after, the, after the USMCA that replaced NAFTA, is that the reason why Mexico is helping us and coordinating with us? We have a better relationship with them? 
Well, we don't know fully. We'll learn more perhaps after Secretary of State Pompeo meets with them. But one thing is for sure, as one administration goes out and a new one comes in, Mexico has found a new motivation to try and help us with this problem. Mm -hmm. One thing that they will do is help with the deportation policy. We're going to hear more about that later. All, All right. right. Uh, Griff Jenkins down in McAllen, Texas. We thank you very much. Uh, the President of the United States uh, referred to the uh, caravan last night at a wide-ranging event out in Montana in Missouri. He said uh, he suspects Democrats could be behind the caravan. And uh, while he didn't cite any evidence, it is thought that he was referring to a video that Matt Gates, congressman from Florida, had tweeted out earlier in the day that apparently showed migrants being handed down in Honduras, it was believed, they don't actually know where it was, uh, being handed cash. And Mr. Gates yesterday called for an investigation whether U.S. backed NGOs or George Soros were behind the uh, caravan. So, you know, obviously, it's a political thing to the White House. He definitely doubled down yesterday at the rally. Remember yesterday he was tweeting saying he was going to send our military, he was going to close the border possibly. Mm -hmm. He doubled down on that last night when he was speaking in Montana. He was also out there stumping for Matt Rosendale, who he wants to become the Republican senator in that area. And he said that immigration is his top priority, or one of them at least. Listen to this. Come Election Day, Americans will remember Kavanaugh, the caravan. Law and order and common sense. That, but a lot of money's been passing through people to come up and try and get to the border by election day. As you know, I'm willing to send the military to defend our southern border if necessary. And the crazy Democrats refuse to support any form of border security legislation. They also figure everybody coming in is going to vote Democrat, you know. Hey, they're not so stupid when you think about it, right? Democrats have become the party of crime. The choice could not be more clear. Democrats produce mobs. Republicans produce jobs. Oh, there he's rhyming. Uh, just, <laughs> just to be clear about the Matt Gates video that he tweeted out and then the president tweeted out, uh, it was suggested earlier that it was shot in Honduras, but now they don't know exactly where it's from. Uh, Mr. Gates said, I got it from a uh, Honduras official, and mm -hmm. so that's why I thought it was from there. They don't know exactly what the nature of it is. Nonetheless, uh, Mr. Yeah. Gates is calling for an investigation. Well, look, this plan with the U.S. and Mexico should mean that, that the caravan is handled better than it has before. The U.N. Right. is supposed to be setting up shelters along the Mexico-Central right. American border to process and make sure people really are refugees and that they're not being handed cash or being directed to do bad you know, cross the border into Mexico and then into the U.S. and do bad things. Right. And then once they, under this new plan as well, if any of these migrants do cross into the U.S. and we find out that they are not legitimately refugees, they've made it through somehow, the new plan says we can send them back to Mexico legitimately. Mexico is going to accept them. So you hope that that plan is in place. That's what the Trump administration mm -hmm. certainly hopes. Uh, Rush Limbaugh was on with Sean Hannity last night talking about uh, cracking down on illegal immigration is a key part of a pushback against the so-called blue wave. Watch. I think there are things that have yet to happen that are going to determine outcomes in some races that we don't know, so it's still very hard to predict. Uh, Kavanaugh feedback reaction was was 100 percent positive for Republicans. The Democrats really uh, blew that. I don't have survey data. I don't trust it. It hasn't been right consistently enough for me. Uh, the people doing these surveys desperately want Trump gone. I don't know how they can take that out of their work. I don't believe in pure objectivity, so I distrust. If I put you on the spot, prediction. But we hold the House and we increase the Senate. And I, because I think that's justice. I think that's just. I think the Democrat Party deserves to lose in the single biggest electoral landslide defeat in my lifetime and because of the actions they've taken just in the last month. Hmm. He says he doesn't trust the polls, that Republicans are going to keep both chambers of Congress. Well, uh, look back to 2016. Polls pretty much got it That's wrong. True. Only uh, one or two polling outfits, including Rasmussen mm -hmm. and I think the USC poll, were even close. Mm -hmm. yeah. Meanwhile, last night, a couple of blocks from where we're sitting over at the Waldorf Astoria, <laughs> a very fancy hotel, and they've got a big banquet room. Every year they host the Al Smith Dinner. Nikki Haley, who has taken up residence on the east side of uh, New York as the U.N. ambassador, uh, had a little fun. She was one of the keynote speakers, and she brought up some people in the news. Listen to this. 
president called me this morning and gave me some really good advice. He said, if I get stuck for laughs, just brag about his accomplishments. <laughs> it really killed at the UN. But I do understand why you invited me. Two years ago, President Trump was here and he made some waves. Last year, you went with Paul Ryan, who's a Boy Scout, and that's fine, but a little boring. <laughs> So this year, you wanted to spice things up again, right? I get it. You wanted an Indian woman, but Elizabeth Warren failed her DNA test. <laughs> when the president found out that I was Indian American, he asked me if I was from the same tribe as Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> Oh, boy. Poking a little fun at the president as well. <laughs> I know. She <laughs> said, the president told her, she said, I, I, did we play that in the soundbite? Because I was, I was talking to you in the beginning of that. But um, she said, the president said, if you run out of jokes, just brag about me. It really, it really went over really well at <laughs> the U.S. That's right. Okay. As it turns out, it was not at the Waldorf story. It was at the, the New York Hilton. Hilton. Because the Waldorf, the, unfortunately, it, yeah, they've always had it at the Waldorf. And it's such a fun event. And the dais is behind the person who right. speaks. And it's just, it looks like a choir in a church. You can see all these celebrities behind the speaker. And they try to figure out who to put next to whom. Right. And Al Smith was governor of New York, I think, four times, right? He's a, a politician in New York, and his family has continued the Al Smith dinner. And every time there's an election, um, every four years, both of the candidates go and they speak. Yeah, the it's Democratic tradition. and the Republican mm -hmm. nominee normally. It's yeah. a big roast. And a lot of money's raised for Catholic charities. It's so it is. what do you think? Blue Wave or Red Wave? Friends at FoxNews.com. In the meantime, we're going to go over to Carly Shimkus with some other news. Good we morning. Happy Good Friday, morning. guys. Friday. We made it. All right. And straight to a Fox News alert. Alert. Several sailors hurt after a Navy helicopter crashes on the USS Ronald Reagan's flight deck in the Philippine Sea. Fox News confirms two pilots and two crew members were in the MH-60 Seahawk when it went down shortly after takeoff. Everyone is expected to survive the cause under investigation. Now, this comes more than a year after two warships from the same fleet were involved in a separate crash. 17 sailors died. Turning now to extreme weather, rain pouring central Texas for nearly a week, showing no signs of stopping today. Lakes, <clears throat> excuse me, lakes are overflowing, flooding nearby homes and businesses. At least two people are dead. As waters rise, officials opening four floodgates at a dam near Austin. They could open all eight for the first time ever. And firefighters braving the floods to save an American flag in Texas. And the video is now going viral. Look at that. And did you buy your lotto ticket yet? Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot now leaping to an insane $970 million. Your chances of winning it all is just one in 302 million. Tonight's drawing is the second largest U.S. jackpot in history. And those guys are your headlines. You have a better chance of getting struck by lightning, just so you know. Yeah, and probably bitten by a shark and all those things combined. <laughs> right. All right. Well, if I win, we're going to throw a big birthday party for Steve. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> I already have my tickets. All right. Uh, meanwhile, thank you, Carly. Want to vote, but you're not a citizen? No problem. Democrats will check the box for you. Oh, boy. What am I talking about? We got details on that coming up. And just when you thought Rosie O'Donnell could not get any more unhinged, well, she does. I want to send the military to the White House to get him. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Mitsubishi. You know, you cannot wait. We're now officially 18 days out from the midterm, so just how tight is the battle for control of Congress? Let's ask former pollster for Ted Cruz, Chris Wilson. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. You, you know, we just played this clip from Rush Limbaugh saying, we know he's coming from uh, the conservative side, obviously, but he raises a fair point for all sides to consider, which is, why should we believe the polls suggesting a blue wave when the polls in 2016 were way off? Well, I think if you look at all the polls in 2016, they weren't that far off. I mean, the fact is, is they predicted a Hillary Clinton win. She did win the national vote. or they, What she didn't win was the Electoral College. And what they did a bad job of doing was predicting each individual state and each individual race. And so if you look well, at Well, that's just not the, good, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So if you look at the national polls, yes. They, but the problem is, is those oversample from California and big cities in the Northeast. And yes, yeah. Democrats do very well there. But if you look at the individual states where there are competitive seats, you look at Texas, where Ted Cruz is now running way ahead of Beto O'Rourke. You look at Arizona.
Arizona and Nevada, where Republicans are going to hold seats or mm -hmm. working to hold seats. You look at Missouri and North Dakota, where Republicans are moving ahead of incumbent Democrats. Right. You look at Montana, where Republicans are now running, are competing with dem incumbent Democrats. And if you look, go into each of those individual states and those individual races, sure. the, in, in that case, Republicans are doing much better. So let's break it down. Let's start with the Senate. You just mentioned North Dakota, Hyde Camp, Democratic incumbent in a big Trump state, down double digits. Uh, McCaskill in Missouri, a Democrat who appears to be in trouble. Uh, there are some people predicting right now that the, the Republicans may pick up two, three uh, seats or so in mm -hmm. the Senate. Is that realistic or is that an exaggeration? Well, it is. You mentioned two right there in North Dakota, Missouri. You also have to throw Florida in that, where Rick Scott is running ahead of Bill mm -hmm. Nelson. And like I said, Montana, where Matt Rosendale and John Tester are back and forth. And the other one that I think is going to surprise, there's two others that could surprise people, is West Virginia, where Patrick Morrissey is running a very strong race against Joe Manchin. Then you have Indiana, where Mike Braun is running against uh, Joe Donnelly. And, and both of those are also competitive. And I'll tell you, and what's going to make a big difference in these states is the president's travel schedule. You look at where he's going and spending mm -hmm. time. Like I mentioned, last night he was in Montana. Yep. I promise you, Matt Rosendale is going to get a bu big bump out of that. Right. Uh, what happens? Does he go to Indiana? Does he go to West Virginia? If he does, that's another case where he can help sure. bring these candidates across the finish line there at the end. You've got Donnelly in Indiana. You mentioned Tester in Montana, mm -hmm. Democratic incumbents who voted against Kavanaugh. Uh, let's end quickly that's on right. the ca so called Kavanaugh effect. Is that real or an exaggeration? You know, it is real. And the fact is, I'm doing polling in a lot of these races. And what I saw immediately following the, the, uh, following the Kavanaugh vote was particularly in states like North Dakota, Montana, mm -hmm. Uh, Missouri, where you had Democrats who voted against Kavanaugh, but even in a state like Texas, where you had Ted Cruz who fought yeah. and argued for Kavanaugh, you saw Republican intensity meet or exceed Democrat intensity. It's the first right. time in the 2018 cycle that's occurred. Yeah, Chris Wilson, you can certainly see a surge in Republican intensity. We'll see how it plays out. We appreciate you coming in. You bet. Thanks for having All right. me. Meanwhile, the president says he believes that that Saudi columnist is dead as Secretary of State Mike Pompeo pushes to give the Saudis more time. Seems like the right move to avoid a full-on diplomatic crisis, right? Well, some in the media, though, they're melting down. Why is that? We'll break it down. And the president was there last night. Todd Pyro is there, too. Missoula, Montana, having breakfast with friends. We'll go to him live to hear what the people think. But this is still this program is brought to you by Advil, fast, powerful, and proven relief that makes pain. News alert, President Trump telling reporters that it looks like the missing Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi is dead. It certainly looks that way to me. It's very sad. It certainly looks that way. Just that we're waiting for some investigations and waiting for the results, and we'll have them very soon. The president also vowing to, quote, very severe consequences against Saudi Arabia if they are ultimately found responsible. Here to weigh in is Muslim scholar and author of In the Land of Invisible Women, Dr. Quanta Ahmed. Dr. Good morning, good morning to you. So uh, what, do you, what do you make of where we are in our relationship with Saudi Arabia right now? We've weathered crises before. This is clearly a crisis for U.S. and Saudi relations, but one that I'm confident our nation and the kingdom will get through. I think the president is showing a degree of wisdom and uh, asking for patience and time and consideration. We would like to see independently the information verified ourselves, but we remember our relationship with the kingdom is almost a century old. We, an American president, President Ro uh, Roosevelt, recognized that the kingdom would be strategically important even before we knew any oil was was present in the kingdom. So not about to abandon the kingdom now. Sure. And we heard that from uh, Mike Pompeo yesterday where he said, you know, we're going to give them a little more time before that, you know, so they get as much information. And they have been a very important ally of ours as well. But it looks like from what we've seen, it looks like the crown prince may have uh, ordered a hit on this guy or been somehow involved. And there's a story out this morning that apparently uh, they may blame a top intel officer who is close to him to have him take the fall. I understand that uh, the, the circumstances look very, very negative. Um, I hesitate to make a, 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 any allegations without knowing the mm -hmm. proof. We also understand uh, Saudi Arabia is not Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. They are two separate entities, though we are uh, pragma pragmatic. We know sure. this, this Crown Prince may rule for more than 50 years. But the truth is, America is, it wants to exert tremendous influence in the Gulf region, and we can't mm -hmm. do it without the kingdom. The goals of our president and the Crown Prince are extremely unified in terms of fighting the menace, menace of an Islamist Iran. We know that the Crown Prince also recognizes the Muslim Brotherhood as literally evil 
terrible, and which is how we also yeah. see it as well, the mothership of all modern terrorism. So I, I would say we have to stand with them. And we've weathered in this city and this country 9-11 with the Saudis and come through that. Uh, we've noticed that a, a number of members of the media are calling into the question the, the president's relationship with the Saudis. I think Joe Biden a, a day ago said uh, that uh, President Trump has a love affair with autocrats. I believe he was talking about the relationship with the Saudis. Well, as well. Vice President, former Vice President Biden can account for his own remarks. The truth is, we live in a world full of monarchs, dictators, autocrats. We deal with whomever we we can. And one of the very strong things about the Crown Prince is he's actually looking to economic reform of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. There's been a mass exodus of American presence from the Davos in the desert meeting. But economic reform is often the beginning of social reform. So the United States should be supporting the kingdom's efforts mm -hmm. at economic reform for a post-petrochemical future. Well, you know, while um, a lot of people have said, look, there's all this evidence, apparently, that we've gotten from Turkey. It looks like the royal family is somehow involved. Saudi Arabia looks really bad. But the president's demeanor and his approach has been, OK, it looks bad, but let's wait until we find out exactly where the chips fall. It, it's not only looks bad, uh, but it, it is bad. However, um, we, uh, we recognize that this crown prince has centralized power more than many previous monarchs. We're not going to move ahead without him, and the United States is not in the business of selecting heirs to the Saudi throne. That's not what we do. Uh, but I think this is a time for the United States to push for its goals in the region. Now maybe we can say to Saudi Arabia, we want you to stand with us even more firmly against mm -hmm. the Houthis, against Hezbollah. Maybe we want to push Saudi Arabia really to see a peace solution in sure. Israel and Palestine. So there are many things we can gain. And remember, those who are gaining from the humiliation of the kingdom, Turkey, Qatar, and Iran, whose goals are sometimes counter mm. to that of the United States. Let's not forget that. Well, let's see uh, what the uh, Saudi kingdom does come out with an answer. It's going to be forthcoming. Dr. Ahmed, thank you, thank you very much for thank joining you. us live. All right. Uh, it is 629 right now here in New York City, and the president, back to his strong message on border security, trashing catch and release. What he says is making the problem even worse coming up. And Cory Booker, the senator from New Jersey, says Canada is more American than America. <laughs> Listen. I can't stand how they're out American us in Canada. <laughs> Trudeau, give me a break. <laughs> Diamond and Silk with reaction. Good morning, ladies. You're next. Nothing. We have the dumbest laws anywhere in the world. Somebody comes in and we say, uh, excuse me, a foot hits the ground. You know, if a foot hits the ground, we're not allowed to say, hey, go back. Every other country in the world, they say, go back. And we have hardened criminals coming in. It's called catch and release. You ever hear this one? You catch them, you find out about them. Even if you find out bad things, you catch them and you release them. And I will say, I have caused the problem because I have created such an incredible economy. I have created so many jobs. I've made this country with you so great that everybody wants to come in. So they're all pouring in or trying to. A uh, big night in Missoula, Montana. <laughs> That's right. Let's bring in Diamond and Silk, the social media stars and Trump supporters, to get their reaction from those sound bites from the rally last night. He was talking about catch and release and just saying, you know, everyone wants to come in. The economy's great. He's made the economy great. And people want to come in. They get to our country. They put one foot on American soil, and we have to release them into our country. What were your thoughts? Listen, I think that the president, first of all, the rally was amazing last yes, night. Yes, it was. And he's right. Catch and release, it, it's a really, it's a stupid policy. Listen, catch and release are for fish, okay? That's right. Sanctuary cities are for birds, okay? That's right. Listen, when you come into this country, come in here legally. Legally. Do it the right way. And if you're seeking asylum, go to the ports of entry. Don't just walk into our country, and then we release you into the population, which is dumb, and we don't even know who you are. That's right. You can't do that in their country. Absolutely. Absolutely. You cannot right. do that. So when you come over here, you have to do it the right way. That's right. Well, uh, Diamond and Silk, here's the thing. Uh, catch and release is the law of the land. If the president wants to change it and if Congress wants to change it, Congress has got to change it. And apparently there has not been a majority in Congress who have wanted to change it. 
Well, we're going to have to put, listen, we're going to have to get up in Congress' face and hold them accountable. That's right. They're going to have to change that law because that law is dangerous. To allow illegal aliens to come over here and then you release them into the population, anything can happen. That's how people form gangs. That's how people get killed. We have to know who's walking among us. That's you right. wouldn't just open up your door and let anybody in and just release them in your house to do whatever, to cook up your food, to mm -hmm. wash up your clothes, to use up your laundry detergent, would, right. you? would you? You have to know who's coming into your house. That's right. So Congress need to get to work, do their job, mm -hmm. and work for the American people. Change this law. Well, that's that right. sounds like some common sense, which the president uh, used that phrase last night in Montana, that this midterm election will be about common sense. But he's got Republicans leading on Capitol Hill, and they haven't dealt with some of these big illegal immigrant issues. So the president talked yesterday about maybe sending the military to the border. Well, uh, Rosie O'Donnell had a response to that. Listen to this. When he got... The nomination, I thought, well, we just got to wait till election day. Yeah. That's all I have to do is hold on till then. Mm -hmm. And then that he won, you know, it took me a good year to compose myself to be in public again. Mm -hmm. I took a year out of the, the spotlight. But for when he was elected, what I wrote on Twitter was we should impose martial law till we make sure that the Russians weren't involved in the final tallies of the votes. And, and people were like, martial law, what's wrong with you? You're a lunatic. You're well, he wants to send the military to the border, so. I want to send the military to the White House to get him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's more remarkable, her saying, I want to send the military to get the president or an entire MSNBC panel thinking it's funny. I find that not funny. You know, Rosie O'Donnell, she said she took a year off. She should have took a year to pack up her bags That's and her right. rags and move to another country like Venezuela because she said that if he become president, she was going to move. to move. Why didn't she do that? That's what she should have done. That's right. And she talking about somebody sending the military to our president. Maybe we should send the FBI to her because she did break some, uh, uh, violate some uh, finance laws That's when right. it comes to campaign contributions, did she not? Yes, yeah, she and did. She's, she's done some other the damnable things. So maybe we should send the FBI to her. And it's individual house. like like her that continue to keep this country stuck in a rut. You know, I don't have a problem purchasing a ticket, a one-way ticket for her to go to another country because we don't need individuals like that in this country stagnating it. Well, I don't, I'm not sure the president's going to send the FBI after her, but when you talk about one-way tickets, uh, it sounds like Cory Booker, with, last we left him, he was uh, playing Spartacus <laughs> in the uh, Kavanaugh hearings. Uh, now he seems to to be saying uh, it's time to, uh, you know, uh, he's talking about uh, how uh, Canada is out Americaning America. Listen to this. I can't stand how they're out Americaning us in Canada. <laughs> Trudeau, give me a break. <laughs> Why do these senators like to go out and seem to talk America down? You know what? Because he has such disdain yeah. for this president, he's clueless. He yeah. don't even see how President Donald J. Trump is making America greater than we've ever seen it before, That's how right. the economic opportunity is available for minorities in this country, how people can pick and choose their jobs, because he is Clueless. clueless. And if he don't like the way America is operating, then why don't he pack his rags and his bags and move to Canada? That's right. <laughs> I think so we've got Rosie with... down in Venezuela and yeah. Cory Booker up You're in Canada. They're sending people all around. The FBI is <laughs> going Get them on out of here. <laughs> Get them out of here because it's dumb individuals like Cory Booker yeah. that sits there, been in, in these different positions, and have did absolutely nothing to benefit the American well, people. A lot of celebrities. It's individuals like that. Well, a lot of celebrities promised to move to Canada if Donald Trump was elected. He got elected. Did they do I it? didn't see it. No, I don't, I don't think. I think zero. They took moved. a year off. So yeah. far. All right. Uh, Diamond and Silk joining us from Diamond and Silk World Headquarters. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much. Have a good weekend. <laughs> thank Thanks, you. ladies. All right, let's hand it over to Carly, who has some headlines for us. Good, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hey. friends. How are you? And, and take a listen to this. Remember when the Obama administration labeled the Fort Hood shooting a workplace of violence? Well, newly released jailhouse letters from shooter Nadal Hassan reveal he thought it was a good idea to kill soldiers because they did not follow Sharia law. He also said he carried out the attack to guarantee a place in heaven for his mom. Hassan shot and killed 13 people on the Texas base in 2009. He's now appealing his death sentence. Texas Democrats accused of mailing voting applications to non-citizens. The Public Interest Legal Foundation showing the form that are pre-filled out with boxes checked off saying the applicant is a U.S. citizen over the age of 18. A complaint now under investigation. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says if it's true, there will be serious consequences. 
No boys allowed. A mother is demanding girls only time at public playgrounds. An anonymous woman writing the Washington Post saying she asked another mother to leave a public playground with her son, but she said no. The woman adding, quote, we live in a world where boys get everything and girls are left with the crumbs. Uh, the Post reporter answering back saying what she did was terrible. And a small town store is making big bucks selling all make your birthday great again cards and adorable deplorable shirts. I am a very conservative Republican and I like people to know that that's who I am and I feel proud to wear it. The Arizona store, originally a Trump campaign headquarters, opened after the president was elected in 2016. Adorable, deplorable shirts. How cute is that? Is we should have shopped there and gotten a card for Steve because today's his birthday. Oh, we could yes. have said, make your birthday great again. Well, we can say it right now. Make your birthday great again. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. It's faster than going to Arizona. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> I know what will make your birthday even better. What's going that? out to your friend Janice. She's hey, ready. JD. She's dancing. I'm dancing for Steve's birthday because <laughs> I know no, you love it. You're dancing because it's freezing outside. <laughs> that and, and it's Friday. Friday. Friday dance party. <laughs> Let's take a look at the maps real quick. Happy birthday, Steve Ducey. We're so glad you were born. Uh, here across the Northeast, it is cool, cooler than average. 44 here in New York. Uh, it's in the 30s across portions of the interior Northeast and the Great Lakes. Freeze advisories are in place. Yes, it helps if you're dancing. Past 24 hours, we do have some showers moving across portions of the Midwest on four Unfortunately, Texas, you're dealing with more rain in your forecast. Heading into the weekend, South Texas and West Texas, you're going to get the bulk of the rainfall, but we still have flood advisories where things are really dangerous with those rivers that continue to rise. So we will continue to monitor that. If you live in Texas, just be aware, know what to do if there's a watch or a warning in your area. All right, it's Friday, and it's Steve Ducey's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one guy behind you watching. Hey, hey, say happy birthday to Steve Ducey. <laughs> Happy birthday, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Oh. It's complete. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Thanks, Supposed to Janice. dance like nobody's watching, but there was somebody out there. There was the <laughs> yeah. one guy. The one and guy. then it was also on TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, 41 minutes after the top of the hour, 2020 hopefuls are hitting key states like South Carolina and Iowa. Cory Booker was actually in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. But can anyone actually take on President Trump? Sean Spicer knows the president extremely well, as you know, and he's going to join us live to weigh in. And Todd Pyro is having a little breakfast with friends in Missoula, Montana. Good morning, Todd. Good morning to you all. Happy birthday to Mr. Ducey from the Ox here in Missoula, as it's known. As a little bit of a historian, as I know Mr. Ducey is, President Ford's son actually worked here at the Ox when he was in college. Will President Trump's visit here work to put Matt Rosendale over the top? We're going to get into that when Fox and Friends returns. But I hope when you cry that you President Trump fired up his supporters last night at a rally in Missoula, Montana, as he tries to help Republicans flip the Senate seat as he calls out Democrat Senator John Tester. You must defeat the Democrats and you must defeat Senator John Tester. I mean, he's a super liberal. How do you? I, I know you people. I won by a fortune of votes, right? Like many, many, many votes. And I know, I know you. You know me. I know you. How the hell did you ever elect that guy? So forget about the pundits. How do voters actually uh, react to all of this? We sent our own correspondent here, Todd Pyro, to the Oxford Cafe. They call it the Ox in Missoula, Montana, where he's having breakfast with friends. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, guys, to you. Yeah, and what's so interesting about this race, it wasn't on a lot of watch lists up till a couple months ago. John Tester seemed to be running away with it. The Republicans really couldn't galvanize behind a candidate, but all that has really changed here over the course of the last couple of months. John Tester versus Matt Rosendale. That's the reason President Trump came here last night. And we have two people who attended that rally. Todd, a really good name, if I don't say so myself, and his lovely wife, Teresa. Todd, let's begin with you. Uh, a new Fox poll lists the economy as a huge issue going into these midterms. You are general manager at a lumber distribution company. You're a bottom line guy. You say President Trump and Matt Rosendale are bottom line guys. Why? 
Well, you know, it's just our country. We need that now. We need to get to a point to where we have this uh, understanding of, uh, you know, our dollar only goes so far. And we need to be wise with what we have and what we're doing and, you know, just to make our country better. Understood. Uh, I want to switch gears to the border because you had an interesting take. You said when it comes to the border, our laws get bypassed for what you call, quote, theater. What do you mean by that? Well, it just it seems like nowadays since our our country is so Facebook, whatever, you know, all these different kinds of uh, avenues of uh, bringing out things, it's it just making it look like, oh, this is such a drastic type of a avenue that our country's going down, when really, if we look at what we have and the productivity and how great our country is, we can, we can find ways to, to make all of this work if people would really put an effort towards it. Understood. You know. Todd, thank you. Teresa, one question for you. Um, you were talking to me earlier. You said you blame the Democrats for the divisive rhetoric in our country. And you say for years Republicans just seem to take it. Now President Trump doesn't take it. Why? Um, he just calls people out on it. I mean, he's not afraid to say what he thinks and what he and he just speaks it. You know, if, if something's not right or if someone has said something, he calls them out on it and he's and he says something about it, which I like. I like think a lot of people are tired of just kind of just taking the high road and not saying anything. But he he speaks your mind. Great stuff, guys. Todd and Teresa, thank you very much. Coming up next hour, we're going to take you inside our visit to the rally. We walked the lines, and boy, there were a lot of people there. We're going to bring that to you coming up in a little bit. Yeah, For now, Steve went, Ainsley and Ed. Didn't you say you went, you thought you were going to get in quickly because you went like five hours early and hmm. wasn't the case? Yeah. We landed, and you figure we're here five hours ahead of time. We have no problem. All we right. got in the line to get in. It was an hour in the car line. Unbelievable. Wow. It was right. We'll be back with you, Todd. I saw the pictures. All right, meanwhile, Kamala Harris, the latest Democrat to throw a plan for free money around. Is this how she kicks off her presidential campaign? We're going to tell you about that coming up. And what happens after the five people you meet in heaven? The author of the best-selling book continues that story. Mitch Albom is going to join us next. Hey, Mitch. Well, we know and we love Mitch Album. His best selling book, The Five People You Meet in Heaven, has touched people's lives for 15 years now. It's been that long, crazy. It tells the story of Eddie, who died after saving a little girl named Annie, and the five people that Eddie meets in heaven. And now Mitch Album is back with a new book. It's called The Next Person You Meet in Heaven, which continues the story of Eddie and Annie, this time following Annie's journey into heaven. Best selling author Mitch Album joins us now. Congratulations, Mitch. Thanks, what a pleasure to sit down with you again. Tell me about this new book. Well, the first book, as you say, Eddie, Eddie dies, goes to heaven, meets five people who explain his life to him. He dies saving a little girl from an accident in an amusement park. He pushes her out of the way and then a cart hits him and he doesn't remember anything. This follows the little girl who was pushed out of the way and she ends up sort of blacking out the whole event from the trauma of it. But her whole life she feels like she's been making mistakes, mistakes. Something's been haunting her. And when she dies and goes to heaven, she meets five people of her own, one of whom, of course, is Eddie from the first book who kind of explains to her that this life of mistakes that she thought she made actually all fit together and made a lot of sense. How did writing these books and how did that contribute to what you've done in your personal life? I know you take care of an orphan child and you have several charities. Tell us more I about that. I have a lot of charities in Detroit where I live. I run an orphanage in Haiti, uh, 47 kids. I'm there every month. And every yes, month? Yeah, I'm there every month. Uh, my passport has been done st over stamped already. Uh, but one of those children uh, developed a brain tumor when she was five years old. And she came to live with us. And for two years, she was our daughter. Uh, she succumbed to the brain tumor, but we traveled around the world with her trying to save her life. And because of that loss, uh, is this her picture? Yes, that's What's Chica. Her name? Chica. Chica. She's and uh, yeah, she was uh, she was the light of our lives. And uh, so that loss, I sort of had to process that. It's one of the reasons I decided to write this book now. <laughs> that's yeah, picture. that's her bell dress. Yeah, we all know what that yeah. is. Yeah, uh, but there's a uh, yeah the selfie. I'm not very good at those. So cute. Um, there's a moment in the book where uh, where um, Annie is shown by a character in, in heaven with pipe cleaners, which play an important part in the thing. And he takes these pipe cleaners because she's all upset about the losses that she's had in her life, just as I had that loss. And he makes a small little heart out of one pipe cleaner. And he says, you see this small little heart? It's perfect. It's small. This is the heart we're born with. 
Then he takes the other four pipe cleaners, he makes this big, huge heart, which has lines all across. He says, see this heart? This is one we die with. And she says, but it's all broken. He says, that's right, many times. And she says, so that's what ruins it. And he says, no, that's what makes it whole. And I've had to learn that all those experiences and all those losses are what make our life whole because it reminds us of what we still have and what's precious. And Annie learns that in the book. And I hope if people have suffered losses in their own life that the book provides them that kind of comfort as, as it did for me. Well, congratulations. Thank You're you. such an inspiration to everyone who reads your, your material. Thank Mitch you. Album, the next person you meet in heaven. Pick it up today. Thank you, Mitch. God Pleasure. bless you. Thank you, Ainsley. A Fox News alert moments ago, people crossing our southern border arrested by Border, border Patrol. Griff is live on the ground. Plus, Sean Spicer, we have Charles Payne and Lawrence Jones. They're all here live. Coming up.